Hello, hello, hello. Let's see here. Yeah, are you okay, by the way? If anybody signs on, just let me know, say hi, so I can see that you're on. Just starting a little early, just to make sure everything's up and running correctly. There you go. I think I'm working now. There it is. When you sign when you sign on, just let me know you're there. Happy Sunday if anybody's there. And I'm trying to get my tablet to work here. This one.
Alright, so... Hey Elizabeth, how are you doing, honey? I'm just getting set up, okay? I'm trying to get... Um, make sure everybody is getting on board here. I'm glad you... Um, I'm glad you uh, signed up and I hope that you're going to have fun. So I have two people so far. Okay, so I think I will be watching this one. So how's your day, Elizabeth? This thing is so weird. Hey Terry, how are you doing? <laughs> Look, this is the first time I've done a online pay as you go um lesson thing on on facebook so i'm having a rough time not having a rough time it's just that it's new technology and you know how that goes it's like where do i go to make sure that everybody's online they're ready to roll hey beth how are you i'm glad you're here cool all right so i'm hoping that i'm just going to probably have to read the screen on my on my computer on my phone because this is crazy. I can't get it on the on the darn tablet. So there's a, supposed to be another person joining in with us too. So we're going to give her a few minutes because I am signed on a little early. This is only going to take about an hour. And you know, it's really a simple project. So you know how I am. I tend to try to make things a little easier. You know, a lot of times you can buy a, a pre-done doggy banner and then unborder it but then you have to use sticky stabilizer and you have to use it's gonna be hard to hoop so why not just make one and uh, I'm gonna show you a trick just to do it so it's reversible and you can have the dog's name on one side and then on the other side it's a plain plain Jane um, dog uh, banner so uh, bandana so that's what I'm gonna show today I'm going to be using course the embroidery machine to embroider and it doesn't mean that you know it doesn't have to be a particular embroidery machine so it's made for all embroidery machines if you guys are available tomorrow night I'm doing embroider embroidery on towels and so I will show you a four inch monogram and a three inch monogram and while the machine is stitching um, software um, is very user-friendly even if you have like an advanced software or basic software so i'm going to give you a little bit of software knowledge as well tomorrow if you get a chance to join in that class is eleven dollars and 99 cents and guess what you know by the time you pay google and you pay <laughs> you pay google and you pay all this other stuff you know it's like six dollars uh, uh, uh uh, service fees that you pay for each student I was like shocked <laughs> so I was like no oh, this is not working so uh, we're gonna go ahead and go through with that but I say I should be available oh cool yeah it's gonna be a good class I'm gonna do about an hour hour and a half so it will be uh, embroidery placement and then um, we're gonna embroider. I, I'm gonna go out and buy some more towels because I want I, I want um, some new towels anyway. So I'm gonna embroider some towels. I'll do some. I'll show you how to do it on your machine. But then I'm gonna also walk you into a computer software program that is very friendly. If you have Floriani, ladies, uh, I know some of you do. If you have Floriani, or if you have Embrilliance, or if you have, uh, you know, brain brain. Oh, designer gallery. Um, the program that I'm going to show you and the technique I'm going to show you on the software tomorrow is going to be very similar um, on all the products. So you can then take what I show you and take it towards your, your product um, at home. And then one day, probably in the near future, I will probably just concentrate on just software one day, okay? So I'm getting the hang of staying at home more 
um, um, on Sundays and Mondays and doing things here. And you guys know that I also do material things and also in uh, Fabric Hut down in Norfolk. So I'm down there four days. And Yeti's right here with me. And I want to get started in a few minutes. I'm hoping that, um, that what's her name is going to get on board because I know that we had a little issue with her uh, trying to get on um, yesterday. All right. So, as I said, I'm going to probably just read the comments off of the screen here, okay? So, I'm going to flip you guys around. All right. Now, is everybody ready and ready to set up and ready to roll with me? Just, I don't know if y'all can do, do hands or... Thumbs up. I don't know for sure. But, so what we're going to do, um, I have given you guys uh, Spoon Flower. Um, they have a video also on how to make a, a banner, but they, a, a doggy um, a bandana. But the thing is, is that they um, do it with one fabric and it's not monogram. All right. So we're going to take two pieces of fabric. So you, here you go. And I am still, see, I'm kind of in the blind because I can't see you guys because I'm posting this. Let me just turn this around. Let me do this. Then I can see if you're making a comment. Okay. Cool. Now I'm, I feel better that way. So now I can see if you, can y'all see this, see this? All right, so Spoonflower, um, they have a, a the pattern. So if you get, you just download their pattern. It's it's going to be a doggy bandana. It's free. Hey, you know what? It's free. It's cool. And what you do, you print out your paper. There will be two pieces of paper for the template, okay? And you're going to tape it up, tape it together, and cut the doggy size that you have. I wanted to do it often, so what I did was I went out and bought the plastic. So I have a, a teeny dog, a small dog, and I have a medium dog, okay? So I kind of figured that most people who are going to um, dress up their dogs, they're gonna, it's going to be the, the small, the medium, the small, and the little dogs, you know? So this is just half of the uh, uh, bandana. So what they do is they want you to fold your fabric and you put the ba bandana template onto the fold and cut and then you will have a triangle like so, okay? Now, what I'm going to do, because we're going to embroider this, we're going to just take our fabric and open it. And I'm going to mark directly onto my fabric with a pen and because that's going to be stitched over anyway. But what this is going to do when I do this, because I'm going to wind up cutting this piece and the back piece. But what I'm going to do so that I can put this in my embroidery hoop and I'm going to use my 5x7, okay? So you can use 5x7, depending on how big you want your doggy's name on the um, bandana. But I'm going to keep my fabric square. I'm not going to cut it out and all that stuff because I want it to be stable in my hoop. So to make the placement the best way is to take your clear um, plastic or either your paper template, okay, and put it onto your, your uh, fabric. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this with a pen. So that I have my size of my template or my dog's bandana, bandana, and this is where I want to cut. But there is one side. Flip it on the other side. Oh, let me do this. Let me do the top part so I know what I'm doing. And then y'all gonna say, "God, this is so easy." But it's fun. But this is way. This gives you, um, you know. When you make your design, when you make your bandana, this is going to give you an actual placement so that you know where to put the dog's name. Isn't that cool? So I'm making, I'm just going to draw. And 
And what a great day. You know, it's going to be like 52 degrees tonight, so I'm going to open up my windows. Now, I want to just reassure over here on this side, because I did go to Kali Wonky. All right, yeah, Kali Wonky. Bad Kali Wonky on this tip. All right, so there's my tip there. All right, now what I have done is marked a triangle. So you might not even see it, but it's, it's just where I'm going to be stitching. This is going to be the actual size. So now I know where I want to put my dog's name. I want to, So I know that I'm going to be a certain distance from the side, which is here, and a certain distance from here. So I know exactly where I'm going to make my placement. Okay, so that gives me a great placement um, so that I don't have any goof-ups and then have my dog's name stitched into the seam. So what I'm going to do is just go into the center. I know that I want Yeti. So I'm going to do another one for Yeti. Hey, Phyllis, I'm so glad. I'm glad you're here. Um, just so you know, Phyllis, I just drew, just in case, I just drew onto my fabric with a straight black pen on one side and flipped it and made a, made a whole bandana. So I have my whole template here of my pattern piece. And also, ladies, before I go, because you know I, I, it's a Sunday, I jump around. There is, in, in here, is a uh, um, sizing tool for the dogs. So you know if you want to do an extra small, small, medium, or extra large, okay? So it gives you some measurements for the dog. And then when you're doing your fold for the collar, I'll show you that in a second. But I know that I want Yeti's name. To be like about four inches or so so i'm going to mark and i want to take this here and just tilt it a little bit ladies i was going to have somebody here helping me but that kind of fell through but i'm going to mark right here because i want yeti to be right in that peak or that triangle okay and so i want to mark it with a purple pen you know i love my purple pens i want to do a straight line so that i can make sure that i'm straight when i go into my hooping i got a north i got a east and west straight line now i'm going to do north and south i'm making sure that i'm in the peak or at that little triangle part of my bandana and i'm making a very long north and south and east and west and I'm going to lift this up. And now you can see where that uh, uh, T is, right? Because that's going to be my center of Yeti. And then you're going to take your tearaway stabilizer. The only thing you need is just one layer. So you're going to take your tear, tear away. Yeti, are you okay, buddy? It's very unusual that he's quiet, ladies. So I'm going to hoop this. You know... This go, This is the right side. This is north, this is south, east, and west, or I might be opposite, okay? But this is the right side of the hoop, all right? So I want to make sure that I'm going to hoop this, and I'm going to hoop my bandana long way. So I'm going to put the top part of my hoop towards this side, to the right side of me. So I'm going to go to the bottom and put my hoop down here, put my stabilizer in, and make sure you press everything, ladies, because um, this I'm using Batik, and it was really wrinkled. So I made, I had to make sure that I pressed everything. And the only thing I want to do is to make sure that my T is in that hoop, well, the, the, the cross, is straight up and down. I don't want it collie wonky. And I'm just looking at my, here's your little indention right here on your hoops. All hoops have a little indention so that you know where your center point is. So I'm just going to use that as my centering. And then we're going to go to our sewing machine. And I'm going to take you over there. And the only thing you want to do, when you're hooping fabric, do not grab the hoop, I mean, don't grab the stabilizer and the fabric. What you want to do is just gently take your fabric 
just the fabric, not the stabilizer, and move it. And that will take all the little pookers and puckers that you get in there when you're hooping, okay? So you're just moving it inside the hoop, like move it towards the hoop, and that will straighten everything out so you can have a nice looking piece like that, okay? Now, I'm going to take you over here. Just bear with me. And we're going to be using a sew an embroidery machine and a sewing machine and a serger because I'm going to do quite a few things um, to make this a lot easier for us, okay? So I'm going to place the, the fabric and the hoop on my machine. And I'm going to turn this towards the machine so you guys can see. Now I'm going to close the curtain so it's darker so you can see the screen better. And I'm going to slide in. And I'm going to try to make sure that I am visible for you guys to see that screen. One second. I'm going to open up my screen on my machine over here. Okay, so I want to just make some arrangements here, okay? I don't, I don't know if I like that. All right, so let's see. Give me one second. I'm probably going to tilt this this way. And move this back. I think you can see the full screen now. Just give me a thumbs up. All right, come on. All right. So everyone can see that? Yeah, okay, perfect. All right. So when you open up your machine, ladies, you're always going to have you know your embroidery designs in your machine you know you can do anything with this if you're going to do an embroidery design or maybe a, a thicker design other than lettering i might want to put two layers of stabilizer in there so that you don't get a lot of puckers with your on your batik okay but since we're doing lettering we're simply going to go to our lettering um, function our text and pick a pick which one you like you have on all machines, you're going to have some, some exclusive designs built in. You're going to have some built-in um, block lettering, some cursive. I don't particularly like cursive that much anymore, but I'm going to pick something that's fun because it's a dog. So I'm going to pick this one here. This is very, you know, juvenile. And this is really kindergarten juvenile right here. But this is a great embroidery stitch for a fun dog or cat. By the way, when you look at your embroidery lettering on your sewing machine, ladies, most cases you're going to have three letters, okay? You're going to have ABC. ABC are letters that are uh, uh, three-eighths and above, okay? They're bigger, bigger embroideries. When you see embroidery letters such as A, B, C, D, and E, that means that they're small text. And small text is only going to be usable because they're quarter inch seam, quarter inch letters, um, you can only use them on quilt labels or when you're making a little label or if you're doing a cuff. So you can't use this for a dog um, um, font because the font is so small. What, what kind of problem does it have, uh, Sharon? Does everybody else have a problem with the sound? Because that... It sounds like it's okay over here on my end, so I don't know. Maybe you need a refresh, Sharon, okay? Yeah, the picture's backwards. I have to, you know what I have to do is I have to do, Um, um, I have to go on Google and find out how you mirror image uh, up the picture 
um, um, through Facebook, and I haven't done that. I was work. I was so worried about trying to do my landscape, um, and so far I can't get the computer or my phone to do a landscape anymore. It just all of a sudden was an update. It changed on me, so I have to let it stand up straight now. So it's crazy. So the sound is good. Okay. So what I'm gonna do, ladies, is stop talking so much, and start start stitching. So we're gonna go ahead and pick our letter style we want and we're going to do yeti i'm doing another one for yeti so i'm doing upper uh, uh case lettering for yeti lower case and i'm going to take this and shut it down all right so what was happening is i was getting a back backlash there now i have yeti spelt out it's in a it's pretty large but i don't know what size it is oh here it is excuse me my bad on most screens, you're going to look for this. You're going to look for numbers. The number here is the height of our uh, uh, design, 1.23. The width of it is uh, two and a quarter, two and three quarters, all right? So I'm going to hit set because I can't control the size of this until I hit set. Once I hit set, this is, a, this is my editing screen, okay? My editing screen allows me to see better, okay? So first thing I can do is go to 100% and now I have 200 and this allows me to see my lettering better, okay? And I can hit back and that's my that will be my normal. Now what I will also want to point out to you ladies is that most machines have a preview screen. So over here where it shows you Yeti, here it shows you a hoop. That hoop gives you um, big hoop, teeny hoop, Five by five, uh, four by four hoop. Okay, uh, so this will give you an idea of how big your uh, design is. Okay, so on a scale when you're using a four by four, then you know you know that's pretty. That's a pretty uh, small design on a four by four. So, but they don't have a five by seven on here. They only have the big the big hoop, big 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 hoop, a medium hoop, and a smaller hoop. Okay, they don't have the five by seven. I don't know why. All right, some machines have five by sevens. So if you have one that's more upgraded, it might have the five by seven, so then you can see. Now, I'm gonna go back to the big hoop because I know I'm using an in-between size. Now I'm gonna close this out. Um, I do want to size this, because remember I told you ladies, I want to make Yeti uh, about three and a half, about three and a half, four inches, so I'm gonna hit size. Size, while you're in lettering, will allow you to size this, and you can size lettering up and down okay your designs um on some machines won't allow you to do any sizing other than 10 or 20 percent but lettering you can go bigger and bigger okay so here it is over one and a half inches almost uh, uh four uh, three point uh three in a, in a quarter three fourths so i'm going to go a little bit bigger all right I want him big, so I'm going to do him at 3.90. That's pretty good, okay? So, I like this. I'm going to close it, okay, ladies? Now, with, with certain letters and certain fonts, it might look like the, the Y and the E are too close together. Well, you do have spacing on your machine, so you would hit spacing, now, that's where I like to use my computer, okay? Because space, spacing on my computer, I can move individual letters very easily. On a machine, you have to play a little bit. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to split that design up. So I'm going to hit A, B. There is a split right here. That split has a knife. That knife allows me to select it per letter. You see that? So is that little knife is going back and forth. Well, now the knife is gone. But that's what I want. It's, it's just basically, it split up all those individual letters. So I can take this Y and now move him a little bit further so he won't be so close. And then if I want to, I can take this E and move it closer to the T. And let's preview this and see how it looks. I'm going to go preview. And I'm going to zoom in. And now I can see Yeti. And I'm pretty darn happy. Now the, the I is a little close to the T. So guess what? I'm going to close this out and I'm going to move that to the eye. 
the red box and move it over. Now, this was not going to be part of the class, but I just threw that in because you know you got to get your $10 worth, right? All right. So we're going to close this out. And I'm going to show you another tool that I like to use. I'm going to make Yeti thicker. So I'm going to choose density. So density is down here. You have size. You have rotate. If you don't like black, you can use red. Okay. And since it's split, it's giving me, it's making me um, do one letter at a time. All right. But I'm just going to go back to black. But if it wasn't split, it would have changed Yeti as all red. All right. Density is where I want to be. So we have size, rotate, color. This is a little funky dude thing. I'll show you that on, on another day. Hey, Francis, how are you doing, darling? But density is where you want to be. Okay, so I'm going to go to density. And I want my density of my lettering to be 20% thicker. So right now we have 100%. I want 20. Well, 10%. I don't want to go 20. 20 probably will be too thick. So I'm going to 10% thicker. Oh, well, thank you, darling. See, I always want to show you something. All right, so I'm going 10% thicker, so it's going to be a nice, bold letter, okay? So close it out. Now, that's all done. Now, I'm happy with this. So if I hit sewing, you know that my my my, my hoop is not right, okay? My lettering, my, my Yeti is not in the right position either. So what I want to point out to you now is I'm going to bring this camera over and show you here. So right now, my t my V is going down this way and this way. So this is the tip of Yeti. So this is my, this is how my banner is set up in the hoop right now. So what I have to do is rotate my Yeti bear. So I'm going to go back to my machine and I'm going to hit rotate because rotate is right here on the screen down here. So you hit rotate, pop, and you can rotate him in the direction you want so i want him to be facing because my my v is this way okay now those of you ladies who have scanners you can hit your scan button and you will see that purple line going that way and then you can move yeti wherever you want but now what i'm doing is i'm simply going to close out because i've already done my 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 rotation that i want and this is where i'm going to go to my machine and since most of y'all have the laser beam, I'm gonna turn my needle beam on so that you can see that. So I'm gonna go over here to the hoop so you can see it. And I'm hoping that everybody can see that hoop. Let's see here. I think everybody can see. I can see it on my screen now. Awesome. So now I can see I can see what I what, what you guys are looking at. Okay. So I want the red beam to be in the center point of that T. So I'm just going to simply move it. And there we are. You see that, ladies? I'm in the center now. And some of us who don't have the needle beam, this is where you have to take the hand wheel. And I tell people to always take their needle down and then use that and then take your needle up so that you can, instead of, instead of, um, Turning the hand wheel, but you still got to turn the hand wheel because you know why? Um, you're going to need to move your design just a little bit and you got to turn the hand wheel to do it. But you need to make sure that when you turn your needle and your hand wheel and you want to match the T or the cross with the needle, you want to make sure that your hand wheel adjustment over here is a 12 o'clock little line. You got to make sure that 12 o'clock hand wheel is straight up and down, okay? So that your machine won't do this number. You know, sometimes you will do you'll hit your buttons and it will tell you something's wrong. That that you just gotta make sure that you have that 12 o'clock positioning. Of course it's not gonna do it now because I'm on live, but you know, you, when you're at home and you do something and you go, why is it beeping at me? Well, that's the reason why the needle's not at the highest point. So the only thing I'm gonna do is just take this out of the way. I do want to clip my thread and make red because my red background my reversible um, um, bandana is going to be red thread so I have my red thread to match this is my red fabric so I have this to match and it's cool so he's gonna be sparkly so I'm gonna clip my thread 
at the top here and pull. Lift my foot up. So sorry. Hold on. And we're going to go ahead and start stitching. And this is only going to take about five minutes, okay? So I have to find out something else to do. <laughs> All right. So you see this? So that means that I didn't do something right. That means that the little that little uh, crybaby is something's not threaded right. So I'm going to just pull that through and, and, and redo it again. All right. And I just had to make sure that thread was tight. All right. So now we're ready to roll. Now I'm going to go ahead and stitch. And what I want to show you, ladies, too, I'm going to go to to the screen again. Okay. I'm going to pull back a little bit. And I'm going to tilt this because I can see that it's not really far up. It's not doing what I want. So I'm going to tilt it just a little and try not to shake. All right, there you go. Sorry, my bad. I'm getting there. All right, so now here's your face of your machine again, okay? And what I would like to do is point out this feature. This feature here is your center positioning of your cross. But this position will allow you to do the square of Yeti. So it's showing you all the points, corners, so that you know that you're, you're going to be okay when you're stitching and you're not receding beyond the uh, seam allowance, okay? So you can just test your your design all the way around. You have nine points to check it out, eight points around the, the center point, okay? So that's a cool thing to do so that you know that you're not over, you're not stitching too big. All right, so now back to the machine. And we're gonna head foot down and start sewing. Now, meanwhile, while that's stitching, ladies, I'm going to get set up. I'm going to let that stitch for us. I'm probably going to move. Is the camera shaking? Good. I don't think it's shaking. I think we're okay. So you can see the needle stitching, right? All right. So I'm going to get set up to the next thing. Now, if you start stitching and you see puckers on your design on your density what you can do is stop at this point clip your thread and what you what you can do is just cut another piece of stabilizer and what I'm going to do is just cut another piece and float it because the other fabric that I use must have had a little bit more starch in it so I didn't have to use another stabilizer so now I'm just going to float this underneath my hoop so it gives it a little bit more stability because I'm not going to see this anyway because it's going to be encased with another fabric on the back. But that will keep it nice and smooth. So now this is just floating underneath the fabric. Hit your foot down and hit start. And I will get my butt going over here on something else. No. I think my table is pretty uh, stable. Is it you say you feel is the table shaking? All right, so what I'm gonna do since it's shaking a little bit, I'm just gonna move y'all guys. We're just gonna move you right on over here. How about that? I'll just fix that real easy.
hopefully next week, next time I do a class, I don't know if it's going to be uh, corrected by tomorrow, but hopefully next time I can do my landscape again so that it will be done. Um, now, I did split my design, so it's thinking that I'm doing um, um, a bunch of color changes. So, I'm going to just hit foot down and hit start. There is a way of going in here and making it all one color again so it doesn't stop at each letter. But since I already started, and I want to make sure you know, everything is good. Thank you, fellas. It looks like my camera looks like it's kind of fuzzy on my on, on my computer. I hope it's not fuzzy on y'all. And. Look, I'm out of words. I don't know what to say. Oh, well, while that's stitching. <laughs> I can't stand not to be talking to you ladies. All right, so tomorrow, this is what we're doing. This is going to be the three inch, can you see? This is going to be the three inch monogram that we're doing tomorrow on a hand towel. And I'm going to hit start again because it's still in that position. There we go. And then... This is gonna be the monogramming on the bath towel, okay? So we're going to pick up, um, we're gonna show you how to hoop on a bath towel and a hand towel and even a bigger towel because you know the different towel sizes, the different sizes of monograms. So we're gonna go over that tomorrow if you wanna catch that, all right? And remember, Tomorrow I'm going to uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Hi. Tomorrow I'm going to um, work when the machine is working. We're going to flip the camera over to the software program, and the software program I'm using tomorrow is FontWorks. FontWorks is just like lettering. Some people, some of us might have letter, lettering works. Letterworks. That's very very similar to letter letterworks. It is the same feature as Designer Gallery and Brilliance, and also Foyani. So what I'm gonna show you is that, you know, those those parts that are, that interconnect with all those softwares, okay? Perfect. Is there a printable pattern to follow? Yes, I have put, I put the, the link on um, um, the page for this particular class, and it's Spoon, it's spoon Flower. If it's not there, I can um, re. What am I trying to say? Repost it on my. So get it with Avery. But it's Spoonflower doll banners. I mean doll um, bandanas, and that's how um, you find it. And I, I, am doing my own twist. They do it with one fabric, with no monogram. Okay. Um. Um. I'm, gonna, I'm doing it with where you can do reversible so you don't see the monogram on the back side. That's what I like about it. And you can flip the pattern back and forth. So it's almost finished. And I'm gonna break out my iron so that I can press this because I wanna make sure that this is nice and pretty. Yeti, I gotta, I gotta get up through here, buddy. Come on, move, 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 brother. Come on, brother. I think next time I do this, I'm gonna do it on a dining room table because I am like short. I have no space back here. <laughs> and Francis, you've been here. You know how how tight it is over here. I have a serger, an embroidery machine, and a sewing machine back here. So, so it's a little tight in this chair. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so it is all done. You thank you, honey. All right, so we're gonna pull the hoop off. And only thing I'm gonna do, ladies, is just slide this machine out of the way because I'm going to be working with uh, uh, my sewing machine in a few shakes, okay? So I'm just gonna slide this out of the way, out of the way there, and then make him, put him over here because I don't want to convert, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm lazy. So I'm going to use in my Juki. Guys, I have a Juki at home now. Hello, 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 hello. I like it, I like it, I like it. But now, let's flip you back around so you can see me. All right, so I'm going to press this. Uh, we're going to rip out this, rip it off. One second. I can't. I can't stand myself. I can't stand hearing myself when I'm when I'm talking to you. All right. So I had a repeat. I had a one of the computers was on, so I was hearing myself delayed. <laughs> all right. So we're gonna rip off all the tearaway, ladies. And this is one of the sulfur tearaways. Tearaways. There's one that's stiffer, but this one's like a wall. This is. I think this is the one I use that um is called tearaway wa uh, uh, stitching wash because it's very soft. And what's nice, it comes out. See how fuzzy that is? But that washes away when you put it in the washing machine. All right. But you don't have to worry about it because you know what? We're gonna be covering this over. Keep your, you know, other pieces because you might use them. But I'm going to go ahead and press this. I have my iron on, so just bear with me. And only thing I want to do, oh, you know what? I don't want to press it. You know why? I need to spray the purple mark off first because if I don't spray the purple mark off and press, it's going to be permanent. So give me a minute here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run out real quick and spray this, okay? Back with you here, ladies. Okay, so I'm gonna press this real quick. Now you could have used the friction pen, and then it will just um, iron away. Okay. And what I did with my template when I marked my my bandana, that's with a regular pen, so it's not gonna come out. I'm not going to bring you butt butter. All right, so we got that. I'm pressing this nice and pretty and flat because I don't want my, I don't want any pookers. All right, so let me unplug the iron so that Yeti doesn't get burnt. Burn back here. And then I'll be back with you in just a second, ladies. Hello. All right, I'm gonna move you over here. I need an assistant. Assistant here to help me with the camera, okay? <laughs> all right, so here we go. So what I'm gonna do now, ladies, I still I have my embroidery done, so it's all nice and flat, pretty, 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 right? So now I'm gonna lay this onto the piece that I wanna use as my back, lay it there. And I'm gonna take my ruler <clears throat> and I'm gonna cut both pieces at the same time. So I'm gonna cut the top part. And this is almost done, ladies. Cut the top part, cut the sides. So I'm gonna make my little bandana.
And only thing I'm doing different than spoon flour is I'm adding that second piece and I'm adding the serger so that you can cut and sew and finish everything in one operation where you don't have to do all this work, okay? So we're gonna take this to our serger now. But hold on, let me put this away. This is my scrap piece. I can make another little small one here for a doggy. Okay. But you you know, I love it because you can make several of these in one step, one one, you know, one sitting. And what a great gift to give to somebody who's a dog lover or a cat lover, you know. Well, I don't know if cats will wear them, but you know, some cats are pretty cool. All right. So you know that batiks don't have a right side and a wrong side, but you know that's one side that I always like better. So here, I like this side better. So I'm gonna put right sides to right sides. And then I'm going to take you to the serger. So give me a minute, y'all. Now we're gonna move you over. And I'm using, hello, hello, a Juki serger. All right, so this one, we're just going to do a quarter inch seam allowance. Now remember, all sergers are same are the same when it comes to your seam allowance. So only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch. Now can y'all see the, I think you can see right here, perfect. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just stitch the sides. I gotta find my foot control. And I'm not cutting, I'm just taking, I'm moving my fabric to the edge of this uh, plate. So this right here, if I, if I put the fabric What was that? Will you show us how you lined up the acrylic ruler? Um, well, I'll try to explain it. I had already marked the fabric with the template. So what I did was I had my... Give me a minute. What did I do with it, ladies? All right, I'll just use a smaller one. What I did is I simply... All right, hold on. Yes, I'll show you this. So what I did, ladies, is I simply went to my fabric, and I'm going to bring this down so you can see. I'm going to hold you for a second, all right? So let's tap, tap. All right. So what I did was I laid this down, and I drew, I drew a line here, here, here. And then I flipped it, and I drew, drew it. So I had a, I had a banner. Uh, I keep on calling banner. Excuse me. I had a bandana traced right onto this fabric, so I knew where to put my centering point of my embroidery because I had a line here, right, and I had a line here. So I knew that when this went this way, and this went this way, I wanted my doggy's name right in the centering point. That's where I wanted it. So that's where I put my north and south and east and west. So that's how I did it. Isn't that cool? So it just gave me, you know, I didn't waste a lot of fabric. See, I could, you know, you could waste a lot of fabric if you didn't know where that, where that drawn template would, would, would be. So you can be real frugal that way with by drawing it first, okay? So that was my little trick that I, they didn't show that in there. I, you know, I have my little tricks. All right, I'm turning you back around, ladies. This is really quick and easy. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to serge, ladies, the side. And it doesn't matter if you write red or uh, 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 upside, you know, red side or purple side. And I was telling you that I'm putting the edge of my fabric right on the edge of the throat plate, which then just trims a, a teeny smidgy, smidgy bit of, of fabric. Surge. Surge. Oh, my thread is stuck somewhere because I moved my fabric. Oh, there you go. My machine. Sorry. I have this thing stretched way over here, so I'm, trying to, I'm, gonna use, I'm using my left foot to drive. All right, so we just surge it. Yes, Yeti Bear.
And don't surge the top yet. Just surge just the sides right now. Okay, ladies? And then... Okay, so now I'm going to turn you back towards me so I can see you because I have flipped you around. Double tap. There we go. Hello. All right. Cool. I'm glad that you, uh, you uh, I did that for you, both you and um, Francis. Good. I'm glad. I don't ever want to skip something and then y'all say, you know, he didn't, he didn't go over that real quick. <laughs> so there's never a... a, a, a a problem for me to stop and do something new. That's how I've always been with my classes. I treat everybody like, you know, I don't want anybody ever to say, well, you know, I wish I'd asked him that question. And it's like three weeks later, you still want to know what's going on. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take my fabric and I'm just going to turn him inside out. Once I turn this inside out, I'm going to press it. And then I'm going to go to my sewing machine, okay? Because I want to do a top stitch. And ladies... You're going to want to pull out that um, edge, the edge joining foot, okay? And the edge joining foot, I'll show you in a few minutes, is a great foot if you do not have an edge joining foot, okay? You can use your quarter inch foot with that guide because it can give you a quarter inch right on the edge of this. And I don't have a point turner, so guess what? I'm using a pen. Yeah, I got to get my air on here because it's hot back here. <laughs> You know, y'all know me. I'm going to menopause. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to press this, ladies. Oh, I took the door anyway. Well, I got to press this. <laughs> I was worried, worried about yet again burn. I don't have a surger. Yes, you can. Well, hello, um, uh, Elizabeth. We, we know each other enough now. You need to get a surger for your friend. No, if you don't have a surger, use your overlock stitch if you want to, or either you can do just a quarter inch seam allowance with your uh, uh, quarter inch foot, turn it inside out. I d we that are spoiled with surgers, we just love to have that raw edge cleaned up, and it's nice and sturdy because it's four threads instead of two threads. Shh, okay. <laughs> hey, if you need a surger, though, seriously, I will get you hooked up with one. We have these great jukies now. I'm telling you, these jukies are, you know, I bet a top of the line jukie that threads itself with air is $1,500. And they're, they're not expensive at all. And the quality is pretty good. Oh, he's listening. I'm sorry. Hey. <laughs> I don't want to get you in trouble. All right. So I'm just making sure that this is all pretty. Look, guys. So I'm going to press this real quick again, okay? Then I'm going to top stitch. I want you to see the edge of that 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 foot when you're going to top stitch because it's going to make w the world of difference so that you don't have to eyeball okay so let me press again so sorry okay i'm back at you here so, oh, thank you, honey. Have you all seen yet? Come here, yet. Come on, come on here. Since the iron has to heat up a little bit. Here's my little buddy. Here, let me get him, pick him up, and I'll turn him around. You know, I had to do, the, do my, my pride colors with him, on him, you know, because, you know, he's a little, um, he's a little, he's, you know, he's one of those dogs. He's just like his owner. All right, so he has his bright colors on. But what's cool, ladies, look at this. So while this is heating up, what's neat is that this is reversible. See, I can flip this over when he, I don't want somebody to know his name. <laughs> but see how I surged this and left it all raw? I'm not going to do it this time. We're going to fix it up real pretty, okay? All right, so now I'm going to press. And that marking, that mark that I did earlier on the fabric to cut out, it's gone because my serger stitch or the quarter inch seam allowance was just taken away. So I'm pressing this out and flat. It's all pretty. 
I'm going to unplug my iron because I don't want him to get hot or touch it. And I'm going to put this over here since I don't need this anymore. Now, what I want to do at this point, ladies, is I want to go ahead and surge the top part because I've already turned the, in, turned the inside out. But look, isn't that nice? Okay, let's go. I'll just go ahead and just tap you. And we're just going to surge. And I'm going to have to move it. And I'll put you right in front of the serger. Is that cool? Then you can see where, it got, where I'm cutting. So I'm just going to surge. And I'm just going to lift my presser foot up. Because it's stretched, the, the cord is stretched so far. So you're just overlocking this edge. You're just going to close that up. So the raw edge is all done. Okay. So he's all this is all done. So now we're gonna to go to the sewing machine, okay, ladies? All right, here we go. Now I'm gonna get set up here on this. Give me a minute, y'all. And I'm not making you too dizzy. I'm not jumping too much, right? All right, so the foot you want to use. And oh, by the way, hold on, my bad. Well, let's top stitch. We're going to go ahead and top stitch. Then, then I, I'm not going to forget. I got this. Okay. So what you want to use, ladies, is this foot here. All right. So this foot right here is the edge joining foot. Or... You can use the stitch in a ditch. All right. You can use the quarter inch. The quarter inch foot would just have a, a, a bar on this side. Okay. This foot happens to be it's like it's like stitching in a ditch. Um, that was a four thread stitch. It was just a quarter inch. So I did on um, both needles and both loopers. Okay. So it's a strong sewing stitch. Okay. Um, so so what I'm gonna do is put this. On the machine, I want to smidget my needle positioning over either to the right or to the left, depending on how I sew my um, um, where I, where I put my fabric. So I'm gonna put this on. Snap, and I'm gonna just smidge my needle position over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna top stitch, ladies. I'm gonna move this so you can see a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna top stitch. Like this, all the way around, okay? Ba -ba 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 -ba. All right, so now let's just start up here, and then I'm going to determine how far I want my needle to go over. Since this is just a doll banner, I'm just going to go over to Oopsie. my bad. I just changed something. Hold on a second. <laughs> Give me a minute because I just I touched something. I don't know what that. All right. Let's hopefully I got it all squared away. All right. So I'm going to move my needle position over. I keep on touching buttons. My needle goes all the way over. All right. So then, hold on one second. So I went over about where everybody has this too, by the way. I went my needle position at, is at one. Okay. So I smidged it over to one. And now it's a nice top stitch. Now, if I want better or bigger top stitch, then I would just move it all the way over so that it goes to the far, far left. And then I would top stitch um, with a larger um, um, seam. But I'm right on the edge of the fabric. And I'm just going to stop right at that corner. And then turn because I have the pivot feature and I don't sew without the pivot feature. And I'm going to come to that corner and stop. And I have decorative thread in my bobbin. That's why um, it's making a little bit more noise there. Put my foot down. Let's do that. And I was just a little bit off there. So what I'm going to do is take my seam ripper and pull that little... I have a bump. 
I have a teeny bump that's right there. It's not really, it's on that, it's in a weird spot of my feed dog. So I'm just going to take that and move it. Put my foot down and then move that over. Because that's a little, I should have pressed it better. All right, now I'm, got, I'm going through that little bump. Come over to this point. Start with my needle down. Oh, I see a little. It's a thread caught down there. I see what's going on. Huh? Where did that thread come from? All right, let me cut my thread. Sorry about that, ladies. I traveled with the machine. I probably didn't. I'm, I'm goofing up here. This is. Oh my word! My machine is dirty. Don't don't y'all see that? Y'all see that, right? <laughs> It's dirty. It's, <laughs> I've been using it a lot. <laughs> All right, so let's fix this. Hmm. All right, we're almost finished. All right, there we go. All right, I'm gonna. Well, and look, it's just top stitch, so I'm just going to start right at the beginning of that uh, stitch or that fabric. And I'm just going to knot my stitch in place. Okay, so I'm knotted in place. That means I don't have to worry about back stitching and just stitch on down. Now, what you want to do... Is you're going to now determine how big of a um I always forget the word I'm so sorry like a rod the pocket okay so what we want to do is we want to make sure that this is going to fit Yeti's um uh, um uh, collar because you know all dog collars are not the same they're thick and thin and they're thin and they're wide ones and you know just like belts so what you want to do is you want to just take your hey bye-bye you just want to take your your um, leash or whatever you're doing, and you're just going to fold it to make sure that you know where to top stitch this down. So you're just custom making this for for him, okay, or or her, and you're just going to bring this over here and make sure that you're going to have enough fabric. So you're going to measure that, and that's where you're going to start stitching. Now, what I'm going to do, because I know that I've, I've made these so many times. I know approximately how far I want to go. But what I want to do is I don't want to have the raw edge. I want this to be a perfect um, reversible collar. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to, you can do this. You can just go ahead and top stitch this down. I'm going to take this foot off. So it's just like him in a pair of pants. So all I'm going to do is just top stitch this down so that I don't see any of the serger edging on the outside when I flip my bandana around. So I'm just going to, Fold quarter inch because my serger stitch is a quarter inch, ladies. Remember, so that's going to be a quarter inch turn, and I'm gonna top stitch that down. And I won't see that no more when I finish him. When I finish hemming or doing the, the pocket, I love the serger stitch because it is a perfect quarter. And I'm gonna move that needle position all the way over and use the foot as a guide. And then this is just going to give me a really good finish, clean finish. And uh, I don't have to overcast this because I've already done it with the serger. It's done. Oh, the air just came on. All right. And then there we go. And I'm just going to cut the serger thread out of the way. And you know what's cool? Because you did it with the serger and you did, you're also doing everything that you're top stitching it down and stuff. You, when you take this and wash it, what foot are you using now? I'm just using the standard foot. And what I did, Phyllis, is I moved the needle position all the way over to the left side so that when I did my top stitching, see how pretty that is? So that right there is done for me, okay? 
So it's like a quarter inch seam, uh, quarter inch from the edge of the fabric. And this is how it looks on the back side. So that's gonna be done. So the only thing I have to do now is just take this and fold this to the to the width of my collar, doll collar, right? You see? And I'm just gonna top stitch, or I'm gonna do a fancy stitch. I'm gonna do a, a feather stitch right on top of that straight stitch. Now I could have basted that down so I wouldn't have a straight stitch there. Or I could have turned this under, pressed it, and then do the top stitch in one step. But I, you know, I was doing something a little different. You know, I'm a little different once in a while. So I'm gonna pull this down because Yeti has two different um, collars. So I'm gonna make sure that both both collars will fit on his um, dog, uh, dog, dog bandana, okay? So I'm just gonna fold that. I'm guessing that that's about an inch and a half, almost two inches. And I'm gonna pick the feather stitch. So I'm just gonna go up. And this is where you can go into your fancier stitches so that you're not just being plain Jane all the time with a straight stitch and get, get something fancy and funky. You can do a decorative stitch, like a, a, a heart stitch or a scallop. But I'm gonna do a quilt stitch because you know that's how we are. So I'm gonna pick stitch for, uh, 13. So I'm gonna go to my uh, group for applique and my feather stitch is 13 and there we are. And I'm just gonna stitch it down and I'm going to move this inward a little bit. There we go. And just top stitch and just move that down. Since it's bulky, I'm just gonna work that little bit of a bulkiness through. Sorry, my bad. I just put my seam ripper away. Oh, I might have to make my stitch length a little bit longer. So I'm gonna go a little bit longer and then start stitching. Now, if I goofed up a little bit here, it's because I, I was, I'm rushing here, I'm sorry. There we go. And I'm just stitching right on top of that straight stitch. My straight stitch is right in the middle of that foot, okay? So my feather stitch is straddling um, um, across. And this is just my standard foot, by the way. So I can see the straight stitch right in that, right in that ditch. Yep, I'm stitching from the back side. You can stitch from the back side because you know what? This is the front side too, you know. Because this right here, I might not want Yeti to uh, have, like I said, uh, it might be, this might be my favorite side, all right? But yeah, you can stitch from back or front because I have the decorative thread in the back side on my, on my bobbin as well. But you could do it the other way. It's just that you wouldn't know where the fold is. You would have the pin. So here I don't have the pin. And you know what, ladies? This is how I sew. I mean, I do sew like this all the time. So I do... Uh, uh, I don't pin a lot, so I, I, that keeps me from pinning. So I'm gonna hit the lock stitch right there. It locks my stitch in place, and then I'm gonna rock my foot back, and it cuts my thread and lifts my foot, and there we go. I'm gonna clip that out of the way, and watch this, and it's cool, this is done. Now, if I had fray check or fray uh, uh, block, I would maybe dab my serger ed edges, but look, that's done deal. And I want to show you the back side because this is going to be really cool because you're going to think, oh, it's not going to look good. Mm, hello. Look how pretty that is. Isn't it nice? See? So so it's equal thread. I have uh, I have uh, um, decorative thread, 40 weight on top. I have the same thread on the bottom, 40 weight. So cool. And then... His collar, on uh, is this one is thinner, but look, it doesn't have to be like perfect match. I, I I make it to the point where it just goes on, it goes in there, right? And what's cool is that um, if you went and bought a different collar, you know, it would fit. And if you have a really big dog, okay, you might have to make a little bit of adjustments on that um, extra large. You might just make, make, make it bigger, like another uh, half an inch or inch template to make it um, for a bigger, bigger dog. Because some dogs' necks are really big. So, isn't that cool? And it's all done. And this is the way it looks on the back side. And what's cool, he's, he's sporting. 
He's sporting purple and, and red. I just love it. I think it's cool. And it's not, it doesn't take a lot of fabric. So what do y'all think? Did y'all enjoy? All right. So I don't know what time it is, but I think we're good. If if you don't have any questions, if you have questions, how about this? If you have questions, because you are on this uh, uh, page, that I think if I'm not mistaken, not that you need to do, do this class again. If I'm not mistaken, I think this class, because you bought it, it is going to always be there. All right. 